Hi, uh, welcome to Bedside Ultrasound. We're going to talk about scanning modes again today, and we're going through those basics. And we're going to talk about M mode or motion mode ultrasound. Uh, this is uh, often used in the emergency department, um, at least in our scanning, and probably in your bedside ultrasound scanning for uh, areas where we want to show motion um, or obtain measurements of um, where motion is occurring. Uh, sometimes it's easier to uh, measure in this mode than uh, what our eye can pick up as the uh, as we visualize it on the ultrasound screen. So, M mode for motion mode. So, in this case, we're going to look here at the anterior mitral valve leaflet. So, this is a peristernal long axis view, and we can see here's our left ventricle. For those of you that are new to ultrasound, here's our left ventricle. Here's our left atria, our aortic root our right ventricular outflow tract. Down here we have our descending aorta. But our focus is going to be this mitral valve leaflet. And what we want to know is how close this mitral valve leaflet comes up to this, to the septal wall. And that's what uh, motion mode is going to help us to do. So as we look here, ah, it looks like it's hitting it pretty well. So this is a pretty, pretty uh, good ultrasound um, image of a peristernal long axis. And we can see it's approximating that septal wall pretty well. But if we want to measure that or document uh, uh, that in a still image or just because our eyes can't appreciate it as well, we can do a motion mode. And as what we do is we hit on your screen, there will be an M mode button or, um, uh, that you can do. And it will give you this line. And you take and you place that line where you want to get your sample. And so it's a sampling line, essentially. And we put that right where we want to be. And so if you look, we're putting that right over that distal tip of the mitral anterior mitral valve right there you can see it flipping up and we're going to see how close it approximates that ventricular wall and we're also going to be able to appreciate its motion in correlation to the other structures here so let's go ahead and see and what we have to think of is now we're going to only worry about the ultrasound beam that's coming down right here and we're going to ignore everything else and is what we're going to get when we do that is we're going to essentially doing a line like this. We don't care about what's going on around the rest of the machine, but we want to know what's happening along this one line over time. And so, you know, we can't tell that by just looking here, but we can then get a tracing and it's going to go right from our uh, left to right on the screen and it's going to be from time zero over time. And as what we can see as we come down, because remember, we were only visualizing along this line. We've ignored, we've chosen to ignore the rest of the ultrasound. And so all we want to see is what's happening over time. So as from top to bottom, so the top part of the screen here correlates with the top here, and the bottom right here correlates down here. And so all of these areas that we see along this line correlate with what we're seeing here over time and what's occurring over time. So these bright lines here, these four still lines, correlate with these structures in the anterior chest that we weren't seeing. We see a little bit of haziness in black here. It's a little hypococ, anacoc, and that's going to be this right ventricular outflow track right here. Then this thick wall, or this, this structure here, is going to be our septal wall. And then we notice we have an anacoc region, but something's moving within that, and that's going to be our mitral valve leaflet. And so we can see how close that comes to the septal wall that we already talked about. And then we're going to get our posterior structures down in here. So let's go ahead um, and see here what, uh, what our help us identify those structures. So like I said, this is the septal wall that we're seeing across here. And then this is the anterior mitral valve leaflet. And we can see what that is doing. Uh, we can see that it's coming up and it's actually slapping against that septal wall, coming down and have a relaxation phase. So this is often called, um, just in particular, I'll bring it up because we're looking at this, is the EPSS or endpoint se septal separation. And is what you're doing is you're seeing the relaxation phase. So as the the heart goes, uh, finishes systole and is in early diastole. We see the heart, the mitral valve leaflet relaxes, lets in a large amount of blood, and that causes the mitral valve leaflet to hit the wall. As it relaxes, it comes down, and then we hit the active phase of diastole, and then we get a little bit more blood coming in, so that mitral valve flips open a little bit more, and then it relaxes, comes down, and it's closed. And then it's going to go through that same process, relaxes, flips up, Let's all the blood in, it slaps against that wall. And so this is a pretty normal looking mitral valve as far as its motion compared to the to septal wall. Um, it's got good movement, uh, it's likely not stenotic, um, and the patient probably uh, likely has a, a decent EF uh, based off of that endpoint septal separation. But what we can appreciate over time in this motion mode is that over time this mitral valve is moving to and from, uh, or to and from uh, the, the septal wall there. So. 
take that off so we can see it one more time uh, without the lines on there and we can see that same uh, movement of the mitral valve. Um, hopefully that helps. Motion mode is always a hard thing to understand, but you got to essentially think of it as ignoring uh, your the rest of your ultrasound screen and you're only concerned about that one particular point over time and what it's doing. So if you have any questions, comments, feel free to leave those. Thanks.